Welcome back, everybody, to State of Belief. I'm Welton Gaddy. And the state of Oregon recently repealed a law that prohibited public school teachers from wearing religious dress to work, be it a turban or a headscarf. The Oregon law dated back to the 1920s. And get this, it was originally intended to keep Catholic nuns from being able to teach in the state's public school system. The legislation, which I must mention was passed with the support of the Ku Klux Klan, also had the effect of preventing Muslim Sikhs or Orthodox Jews from working as public school teachers. Members of those faiths were legally prevented from wearing their religiously mandated articles of faith in the classroom. Rajdeep Singh is the director of law and policy for the Sikh coalition. He was instrumental in the repeal of this law, and he recently spoke with my producer, Julie Mayshak. Rajdeep told her how he first got involved in this important issue. What happened was, in 2009, the Oregon legislature passed a state law called the Oregon Workplace Religious Freedom Act. And in most respects, this was a good thing because it expanded uh, religious freedom for workers throughout Oregon. It made it easier for uh, employees, religious employees, to practice their faith uh, in the workplace without worrying about getting fired or demoted uh, and the like. However, this law, the Oregon WARFA, contained a glaring uh, exemption for public schools. In other words, it did not apply to public schools. Public schools had no obligation under this new law to accommodate religious employees. And the reason why this exemption was created was because Oregon had on the books a law uh, which was enacted in the 1920s, which uh, prohibited public school teachers from wearing any kind of a religious dress. Now, a, a number of groups across the interfaith spectrum objected to uh, the creation of an exemption for public schools under Oregon's Workplace Religious Freedom Act because Oregon's ban on religious dress for public school teachers was enacted back in the 20s with the support of the Ku Klux Klan at a time of uh, overt hostility toward racial and religious minorities. And so we found it ironic, all of our groups, that under the auspices of a law that purported to uh, expand religious freedom, uh, religious uh, uh, freedom was being denied to an entire class of uh, Oregonians. That's really interesting. And I um, want to have you talk just a little bit about, I mean, this ban, as I I, I read that it had gone all the way back to the Ku Klux Klan, and it's, you know, at, at this point before it was overturned, it was 87 years old. But can you talk a little bit more about the origins of that bill? Or was it, I mean, was it discriminatory in its very nature from the beginning? Or was there other reasoning that went into the, the passage of the original law? Yeah, the original law was one of several laws that were aimed at racial and religious minorities. And, um, you have to understand the, the, the ban on religious dress in context. Uh, back in the 20s, supporters of the Ku Klux Klan passed uh, a law that required all Oregonians to go to public school in order to uh, obtain uh, a high school diploma, kind of a, a recognized, certified high school diploma. That was an oblique way of uh, forbidding Oregonians from going to private school, which in those days were almost always Catholic. So as a backstop to prevent unemployed nuns from coming into the public schools, Oregon's legislature passed another law, uh, which is the, the GARB ban, the so-called GARB ban. And um, there were a whole slew of other laws, kind of a parade of horrible laws that were enacted during the time, one of which uh, prohibited Japanese immigrants from uh, owning uh, any kind of property in Oregon. Uh, another law... Uh, which was enacted back in the 20s, required ethnic minorities to declare their ethnicity if they own businesses. So this this um, ban on religious dress for public school teachers wasn't really passed in a vacuum. It was one of a series of laws that were aimed at racial and religious minorities. And, and as I understand it, this ban wasn't unique to Oregon. There were other states that did this as well, and other states that still have this ban on the books. Isn't that correct? Yeah, I mean, back in the uh, early and, and middle part of the 20th century, uh, a number of states, uh, upwards of 30 or so, uh, had bans on religious dress for public school teachers. Most of those, the overwhelming majority of those bans were repealed. And as of 
uh, just a few months ago, only three states in the entire country uh, banned religious dress for public school teachers, the three states being Oregon, Nebraska, and Pennsylvania. Uh, happily, we're only down to two states, and uh, hopefully in the fullness of time, Nebraska and Pennsylvania will see the light and uh, repeal those uh, retrograde laws which they've got on the books. And so talking about the, you know, the repeal of the ban specifically in Oregon, how big of a victory is this um, for both the Sikh Coalition but also other Sikh organizations that, that you worked with on this? Well, uh, it, it's very difficult to overstate uh, the significance of this, um, this victory because um, it's, it, it's not just a victory for the Sikh community. It's a victory for all uh, religious minorities in the United States. It's a victory, indeed, for anyone who uh, supports expansion of civil rights uh, and protection of civil rights for all Americans. Uh, you have to kind of understand what, what has happened in Oregon in the context of what's been going on in places like France. In France, it is illegal for Sikhs to send their children to public school with their Articles of Faith intact. It is illegal for Sikhs to teach in the public schools with their Articles of Faith intact. It is illegal for Sikhs to uh, obtain identification photographs with their Articles of Faith intact. And so what's going on in France is really uh, sort of uh, a, a bellwether of sorts. And I think what happens here is also a bellwether of sorts in the sense that it, it uh, gives us a, a sense for whether we're, we're turning into France or whether we're, we're living in a society that still uh, values and protects religious freedom. And so... The fact that Oregon has repealed and rolled back its ban on religious dress for public school teachers, the fact that Oregon has opened uh, the doors of equal opportunity to aspiring Sikh teachers and also Muslim and Jewish teachers um, is really a sign that we're moving in the right direction. I read something interesting that I wanted to have you comment on. We don't have to go into too much detail with this, but um, that the ACLU in Oregon actually objected to the lifting of the ban uh, because they, I assume, were worried about proselytization in the classroom or that this was going or that it was going to somehow, you know, add a kind of religious element to a public classroom. Do you want to comment on that at all and how that played out? Well, some status quo supporters, uh, I think, were hypersensitive to the uh, specter of uh, religious indoctrination in the public schools. And um, I think the, the, the fact that 47 other states in the country presumptively allowed religious minorities to teach in the public schools with their Articles of Faith intact uh, effectively refuted arguments which were being asserted by uh, status quo supporters. Uh, look, I mean, our position is that there's a difference between religious dress, uh, you know, a piece of cloth which is worn in private adherence to faith, and overt proselytizing, messaging, um, you know, a, a T-shirt that says God is great or, you know, Jesus saves or, or, or the like. Uh, there is a big difference, and I think that that difference has been recognized and acknowledged by the overwhelming majority of states in this country, including Oregon now. So 48 out of 50 states in this country um, support our position and hopefully will uh, be 50 for 50 in the fullness of time. I, I'm curious whether you got any pushback from um, the state legislature in Oregon. How hard was it to actually get this uh, ban repealed? It was uh, difficult initially uh, last year to, to generate momentum for its repeal because, um, you know, this this law disproportionately impacted uh, Sikhs and, and Muslims and, and observant Jews uh, who are who are minority. In, in in Oregon and, and frankly elsewhere in the country, and you know it's it's very difficult to convince generally in the context of civil rights work the majority that they have got a stake in the well-being of religious minorities. And once we were able to get support from um, people in in the Oregon uh, state government, the Department of Education, and so forth. Once we were able to get the support of the Oregon Speaker of the House, who was instrumental in getting this law repealed, Speaker Dave Hunt, it, it created momentum and sort of a domino effect, which proved to be uh, unstoppable. 
This victory in Oregon, uh, coupled with a recent news story that I saw about um, the U.S. Army recently graduated uh, one of the first Sikh soldiers to finish boot camp uh, without being forced to shave his beard or remove his turban. And this is a religious exemption that, as I understand it, is really hard for Sikh soldiers who are serving in the armed forces to get. And coupling that with what's uh, with the repeal of the religious garb ban in Oregon. Uh, what is the momentum like now for you? Or do these sort of two issues constitute a, a groundswell around uh, issues that, that the Sea Coalition is currently working on? Well, I would say that we are cautiously optimistic. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this, this is a, a big, big step. Both of these uh, victories in Oregon and also the U.S. Army are big, big steps in the right direction, but we're not we're not ready to to declare victory because, um, as I said, in the context of uh, the right of Sikhs to teach in the public schools, there are still two states in this country that forbid Sikhs presumptively from teaching in their public schools. And in the U.S. Army, um, Sikhs are uh, accommodated really at the pleasure of of uh, you know the the unit sort of commander, and so. Uh, presumptively, we're not allowed into the U.S. Army. We're, we're the exception, not the rule. And so until we are the rule and not the exception, I think we're going to have to keep on working. But we are uh, very gratified about uh, what's been happening uh, in, in recent months, and uh, we're moving in the right direction, and uh, we're cautiously optimistic. That was Rajdeep Singh, a sharp young man. Rajdeep is Director of Law and Policy for the Sikh Coalition. He spoke with my producer, Julie Mayshack, about the recent repeal of Oregon's ban on religious...